everyone. So what's, what is the journey of building a first-time API product in an established company? There's a lot of challenges, a lot of pitfalls, a lot of mindset need to be shifted. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about kind of a framework of question that will help you and your teams and the teams that are building APIs in the first time to actually uh, um, plan better this journey. So before I start, I want to say thank you for the API Days teams. It's a great, incredible event, uh, watching for many years. Uh, my name is Tom barkan Benkler. I'm a Senior Director of Product Management at Expedia Group. Um, I have more than 50 year, 15 years of um, building, managing product, mostly API products. I worked with many teams that built the first uh, API products. Um, and basically, I started my career as a developer. So I'm still a product manager in my head, but I'm a developer in my uh, heart. And that's why I'm so passionate about building products for developers. So before we go to the framework of the questions and, and, and how kind of to plan the journey, um, let's start with the motivation. Why we need this framework of questions? So a company made a decision to build an API product. It can be a B2C, B2B company, SaaS company, whatever. They want to build an API. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's because they want to become a platform company to scale their business or you know, change their positioning to be more technology company. Sometimes that, that salesperson that I'm sure everyone in the room knows who I'm talking about um, needs an additional API feature that will definitely close the deal that will change the company future. Somebody, sometimes the competitors have APIs and you want to align with the competitors and sometimes to open new markets, to go to a new segment of market, for example, big enterprises that require customization and things like that. And Usually in these cases, there's kind of a kickoff meetings, I've been in couple, and the most common reaction is, yeah, everyone, everyone have API, well, it should be that API, it's not inventing the wheels, right? Like, that should be simple. And we are developers, like, we're using APIs. Like, we have internal APIs in our infrastructure, we're using external ones, like, you know, Stripe, Twilio, Shopify. Like, why, why it should be that, that complex? Why it should be that different? And then the API product will um, be like any product we manage sales and market, right? From a product management, from a marketing standpoint. We have a, a lot of product we are selling currently to the market. So why it should be that different? It should be easy. And I see us as a product leaders or leaders of um, teams that want to build our first API or going to this journey, um, kind of our role is to be the myth busters here and say, no, that's completely different than what you think, there's more complexity to it. And even if you are a company that's very well organized with already microservices and uh, um, user interfaces all connected to each other, and for you, API seems like another, um, another interface or another user interface to connect to your microservice architecture. What I learned through the team is that then the second, the second customers have a different billing requirement, and then you started to build a rocker on. And then you need to have a different way to manage different customer preferences or like rate limiting and things like that. And then basically there's the enterprise customer who wants the isolated environment and you build a mess. Um, and usually uh, um, you're doing a re-infrastructure and building it all again. So for avoiding that, um, I kind of, created to myself kind of six sets of questions that it will be useful to ask the team in this kickoff session. Um, the product team, the engineers, the marketing, everyone that's in the room. Um, I kind of think about it as like the sixth sense of um, API uh, product leader. The first stage is kind of product management one-on-one. -on -one. It's just the why. I know it's Sounds very basic, but there's a lot of time teams go and build feature or build things without asking the very critical question. And we are, when we are going to this journey, and that's gonna be a long journey of building API products, I think it's really, really critical to understand the why. The why for the company, why this opportunity is actually uh, um, important for the company. And then why it's important for the customers as well. Like what is the use cases? You know, the customers or developers, why they cannot develop by themselves? Why they need a specific uh, um, API to connect to. 
who are the customers? Um, what is the buyer persona? But who are the customers in terms of segmentation? Are we talking about, are we going after existing customers or new customers, new segments? Are we going to small, medium businesses or large enterprise? Are we going to a tech or a non-tech customers? And it's really, really important to prioritize. I can tell a story from like more than 10 years ago when I worked in a company that we had an APIs and we had a really good um, campaign to go after news and media companies. And basically we signed a lot of contract, everybody were happy, and then in the moment they started to integrate, they just asked us, okay, great, where are you, when you are starting to develop? And then we said, oh, we're not really developed. Um, you should connect to our APIs. And basically we understood they don't have any development resource to actually connect it, and we did a, ro a wrong kind of path. We didn't think about connecting with third party outsource company that will help and et cetera. We didn't plan it correctly. So it's really important to focus on which are you are going first. And then what the success looks like. like what is the metric, uh, the impact it will be for the company? Which metric will be different if it's the revenue, the amount of customers, the new type of customers, the new product to the market? Like what you're actually trying to change when you're kind of um, doing or building a, a new API product? So that's the why high level question, right? Like the product manager 101. But then as we know, the API is just the very thin layer on the top and there is a huge iceberg in the bottom. So how this API will work with the current infrastructure? What are the old questions that you need to ask in order to make sure that you're building a new access to your infrastructure, to your service, to make sure that you have the right authentication method, the right API management, um, strategy, the right API gateways. Um, how are you going to charge your customer? Today you charge your customer with, I don't know, existing solutions, like how they going, are they going to work for the API business? Are they going to work for the new business model that you're going to develop, like usage business model, and et cetera? Um, and how you manage customer differently, like different customers have different configuration, different uh, preferences. How are you going to manage it, especially in a large scale? Then if you are going to uh, enterprise environment, so how does your platform align with the non-function uh, requirement? Um, a lot of compliance needs sometimes because you're part of this, this service, is part of the stream of the other services, and what region you should deploy your infrastructure. And a, com a previous company that I work for, we, have a big, we had a big infrastructure in London, and then the Brexit happened. So we had a huge process to have another infrastructure in Europe and to make sure that it's all correct. So how do you manage and how, what do you focus on and, 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 uh, and those kind of questions that are asked as a deeper problem. So after we understood the kind of the big, the big picture, the question and then the deeper problem, like what's behind the scenes, um, how you, do you build the right teams to support that? So, um, it depends on your product strategy. Are you going in a depth product strategy or breadth product strategy? And what is your current uh, organizational structure? Like where the talent in your company is actually here? An example of a depth product strategy is, let's think about a CRM that we want to build now an API that basically will enable third party apps, kind of application, a marketplace. So it's very, very focused for this third party apps, the marketplace, this application. So a, an option will be to have one team that's managing the product, the actual subject matter expert on the product, but also the developer experience and the platform services. In the other side, if we're talking about the breadth, think about the same CRM, that they have a team that's uh, working on the reporting, team that's working on the, on the workflow management, team that's working on, on, the, on the customer cards. Each one of them want to create a product and APIs, and each one of them are the subject matter expert, and then, Usually what I see, there is a lot of like shared teams, like developer experience on the platform services that helps the team to build the kind of the infrastructure and helps the team to create the end-to-end -end experience um, that it will be consistent across all these products. So we build a team and very, very relevant to building a new team, um, we need to take this API to market. Um, what is different than the current product that we have in the market and what we need to build what the infrastructure we need to build in order to support the go-to-market. So let's start with the sales. Like, are the sales teams ready to sell API product? 
do they have the technical resource, the pre-sales engineer or technical advisors that can help them to jump on a sales call with a CTO and not just taking one of the developers to kind of join the conversation? Um, are the incentives of the sales as well aligned to the API model? And something that happens to me as well a couple of years ago, um, I worked in a company that the sales persons was incented, uh, incentives was based on the account revenue. Um, we signed a big contract and two months later, the salesperson came to my desk and asked me, where is the money? Um, and basically I told him, it takes like three or maybe more months to integrate. It takes some time until they're going to be in production. And then he told me, okay, I don't want to sell that. I'm going to sell my regular product, which I'm getting the, the revenue immediately. So how to change the sell incentive and make sure that they are aligned to the actual uh, uh, product, to the actual the API product? Um, do you have the right marketing channel available for the API products? Um, developer relations team, there's many, many resources about that. I'm not going to get to it, but do you need it? Do you have any resources like that? Do you need to create one? Um, and do you have the right product marketing capability so you'll be able to articulate the right message for developers, which is different? And? And what is the support model? Like, if we are talking about the CRM example, you know, if you have a workflow and you have a support that support the, the CRM uh, uh, workflow, now they're gonna get some requests from developers about, this is my code sample, it doesn't work, can they actually support it? Do you have the right people to support uh, your customers? The next stage, the stage number five, is the governance. So after, we, we build a team, we know how to go to market, how we make sure that all these products that we are creating have the same standards. There was many sessions today here about the governance and how to manage uh, the right governance. So how you manage the API offering, how you manage the API standards and experience uh, um, across the different product. One of the things that is very, very annoying as a developer is that you're going integrating with product, engage with a company, then you are basically want to engage with another product because they released a new feature. But then you need to learn a new authentication method, the names, the titles, everything is different. Um, the sandbox doesn't work because it works only on the legacy uh, um, feature that they released. So it's not aligned, it's not consistent. It's, you need to relearn again everything. So how you make that consistent, how you create these processes that will keep your product very consistent and uh, alongside the experience. Um, how do you manage product life cycle? What is your governance and processes for managing better products, versioning, breaking changes? I'm sure that everyone that built API products um, um, was had an experience of changing or releasing breaking, breaking, uh, breaking stage uh, changes to production. Uh, that always happens, but how do you, can you manage it and how you can make sure that, um, that it's, it, uh, it's not happening and you have the right processes to avoid it? And then the last one is, what is the contract with your customer as well? So in the contracts as well, how you manage this SLAs, how you manage this versioning, how you manage your better products, even about the contract, for example, if you want to change versioning on the better product because you keep, uh, keep changing it. How do you manage it from a contractual perspective? And then stage six is like, there's no better way to, swim, to learn how to swim than just jump into the water, right? So what can be the first or the minimum viable product for you to actually, uh, um, that you can build and validate your hypothesis? Like we took an hypothesis that this will change X metrics of the company, um, our customers will actually want it, so what is the minimum that you can build in order to validate it? Um, how you can leverage existing tools to go faster um, to market? There's many, many tools um, that appear as well, um, to, to do the authentication, the API gateway, the documentation, like can you manage to reuse them instead of like building everything from scratch? Can you build the first version as a private beta? So do you have like uh, very friendly customers that you can even share the resource, uh, reduce the cost in order to make sure you are trying that first with a customer before actually doing uh, a PR of a launch or actually committing 
two APIs, and then you know, once you have an API out there and a lot of developers are integrated to it, it's going to create a very bad um, and negative impact if you actually take it off or change it completely and things like that. So can you do it in a very kind of a low profile to test your hypothesis and test if the product is actually works? How you capture feedback, it's important as well because that's why you do the first, uh, bidding the first API in order to c capture feedback and iterate. And how does success look like? Again, like the metrics we talked about for the whole company and the impact, what will be the impact for that specific uh, um, API, the first one? So to summarize, um, if you have this situation when you're in meeting you're the first kind of company, the first time building an API, so the first thing is important to break the myths, answer all the critical questions, um, if it's the, the deep questions or the high level question or the governance question, but answer and plan. Um, set, a, set clear goals and, uh, and start small and iterate. And I really hope that in the next time you are kind of in this kick of meeting in this situation, you will be able to ask the right questions and keep calm and build an API product because I think that's a wonderful journey. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.